What is up YouTube, HBJ here, and I'm coming at you guys today, because we're going to be taking a look at the TCG, well, the OCGs, I'm sorry, not TCGs, the OCGs, for a bit limited list for uh, October of, October 1st of 2022, yeah. So if you guys are looking forward to the OCGs for a limited list, don't worry, that's what today's video is about, and I'll be going over the changes for the OCG. Now, just a couple of things that I wanted to keep you guys ahead of. This is the OCG for being limited list, not the TCG. So things may vary. Um, when the TCG list comes out, of course, I do a video for that as well, and compare and contrast and all of that. Now, when it comes to the OCG list, you also have to remember that their game style, or their meta, is completely different from ours because they're always advanced excuse me, ahead of us, and they're also uh, running off with different things there. Now, while I pay attention to that, I also want to include that, yes, there's going to be a lot of differences between them. I will go over it um, throughout the video. And, of course, that this is more a casual player's look on the list. If you're looking for more competitive or more meta experienced players, uh, I'm sure they've already posted their videos on it, so. All right, with that said, why don't we go ahead and we take a look at this list. So, starting off, we have Newly Forbidden, we have Union Carrier, and we have the Wandering Griffin Rider being forbidden in the OCG. Next up is the Semi-Limited, I mean the Limited, and that is Slot Frog, Agido, the, um, sorry, because I have the names and stuff on another one. Uh, right here, yeah. Agito, the Ancient Century, uh, Caldeo, the Possessed uh, Statue, uh, Sprite Jet, Herald of the Orange Light, uh, Jadagarasu, we have, um, this is the field spell for the Tier Elementals, this is Paramonial, uh, this is, no, not Paramonial, the name is right here, this is uh, Primavera, the Planet uh, Pelarino, Palarino, uh, Sprite, Sur Sprite Search, uh, Flanderies in the Magnificent Map, and Time Seal are all here. Uh, then for the Semi Limited, we have Double Iris Magician, um, ABC Dragon Buster, and Water Enchantress. No, I'm, yeah, Water Enchantress. Uh, this is Tier Elemental uh, Hasbit, uh, Dimensional Shifter, uh, the Phantom Knights of Torn Scales, uh, Lightning Storm, and then for the uh, unlimited cards, Genex Ally Birdman, uh, Danger Jackalope, uh, Spiral Resort, uh, with Sky Striker, Mech Widow Anchor, and Magical Meltdown. So these are all the cards that are going to be unlimited uh, in the OCG on the 1st of October. So. Now that I have your attention here, and also because I have two various lists to go off of, um, why don't we go ahead and we just break it down. So, starting off, of course, before is we're going to start from top to the bottom, but I'm going to interject cards in between. So, um, we'll start off, of course, with the changes to affect the day, the, not the, <laughs> the, uh, the adventure token. Now, adventure is a very splashable um, archetype because you can splash these cards into others to make them more powerful or to make up for things that they've lost in the time frame. Um, basically, it's token spam and token manipulation and using and abusing tokens. With this set, the reason why this is a thing is because, well, you look at what Griffin can do and Griffin's not only a removal, but he's a free special summon, also the fact you only need a token. Literally, you only need a token. I think it's an adventure token as well. Um, with that being said, Water Enchantress, you also have to look at her as well, because she's going to search for a lot of these cards to create these tokens. And I do believe they're getting new support too, because I think it's, um, it is uh, Darkwing Assault that's giving them the newer support that generates a token. Literally just to generate a token on the field. And all you have to do is just summon the Griffin and he can either bounce stuff away or he can blow up stuff. Um, if I'm remembering this right. I don't use these monsters. I just know that they do stuff. And I've only had to interact with them more so on Master Duel. 
So that's part of the reason why I don't have too much of a strong suit of them. But I know that they have been existing in the game for over two years. They're a strong force in the game. And at this point, actually, I know, I think a year. I'm sorry, not two years, a year. And just for the fact that Masterville had to limit water enchantress in the spell card that helps generate the tokens. Yeah, this was something that definitely did need to be happening happening to be hit and I'm sure a lot of people are glad it hit but also hurt because most of them probably didn't pay for it. There's yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh goes. So um the Union Carrier and we're not only gonna talk about Union Carrier but we're also gonna talk about ABC Dragon Buster. Uh because of course Union Carrier's initial um effect is to support Union monsters. That way you don't have to do so much to bring them onto the field. Uh, in terms of, you know, rushing to a summit, you can easily get Union Carrier off the card to put them onto the board. Then, a la ABC Dragon Buster, you can just simply send the monsters required for its summon uh, to the graveyard to touch the summoning. And you can just, you know, swap it for those monsters and all those shenanigans that it entails with Dragon Buster. Now, banning the Union Carrier can also help in some other instances. Uh, it slows down some more. So that some more doesn't help Avion get Thunderbird. Uh, you can also help in the terms of stop thinking slowly down the uh, Destructive Blade for Buster Blader. So that way they don't get their monster and lock people out. Because there's a lot of lockout decks that you can easily take advantage of. As long as the cards are in the field and equipped, it will do things. Those cards will do things to help other cards. So with, um, what is it? In terms of some more, Avion will have something to bounce every turn, and then it'll bring out Thund Thunderbird's effect to trigger to bring him out onto the field once he's been once he's been returned to the hand. And then you have the aspects of the um, the Union Carrier helping ABCs, where ABCs can float their monsters to send them to the grave to make the Dragon Buster. And of course, you know the utility of the uh, was it the Buster Blader monster. And then being equipped to cards and then having your own abilities as well to basically lock your opponent out of summoning. So, yeah, you can see why a lot of this has to be hit for its fails. We move on to the limited section, and they said two of these decks just have to stop. You have Mill, which is constantly just creating its own problems of it's it's one it's 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 solitaire play, basically. And that's what they're trying to do with this instance of the list here, is that they're trying to stop the solitaire play from going on. Um, and she's, you know, got her new support. She got her stuff for her monsters, and they're doing really well. The problem is that they're very, they have their own splash ability, and they have a lot of utilities um, on their own. They're fairy, they're earth. There's a whole lot of searching, there's a whole lot of milling, there's a whole lot of gathering of cards, and that's pretty much why they have to be hit as soon as possible. There's also including with Herald of Orange Light, because I have seen variants use the Herald to help negate cards and stop negate monster effects and stop them. There's also the fact that Herald needed to be hit a while back because Herald was in addition to the problems of Eva and Drytron. And just the simple fact that Eva may have been banned, but there were still decks that feel off of using the Herald of Orange Light because he's a diviner of Herald. You still have the access to the fairy support that came within the divine, the Viner of Herald. And then you have this whole Earth attribute fairy setup that really takes advantage of Herald. Because they're fairy, that's all you need for the dump. Uh, toads, splites, toad and splite. Having like, easy access to level two monsters, having the ability to do negation or removal, and having a broken search. Yeah, it was only a matter of time before they hit Splite even more. And even more to the extent of hitting Frog, because Frog was another one of those. We can splash this engine into this engine, and it works out perfectly well, being that you have a lot of these level 2 monsters coming onto the field of being set up in the graveyard to help bring out more level 2 monsters. And that's literally what Swap Frog did. With no hesitation, with no remorse, and with no fuck to give. Um, being as that is, of course, Konami wanted to stop that as soon as possible. Um, then we move on to Yadagarasu in Time Field. We're looking at old Yu-Gi-Oh cards that when you look at them in the current meta, they aren't as strong as they once were. Being as Yadagarasu in Time Field with a whole lot of stuff to keep them afloat, it was only a matter of time before the three-legged crow 
and the seal that plots time came back into fruition. Do I think they'll both be at three sooner or later? The spirits aren't really popping, and time seal has a lot of things that goes against it today. So, yeah, it's only a matter of time before you'll see them in multiples. Both in the OCG and the TV. Um, field spells, and respectively, we're gonna just do, we're gonna start off with, um, the Magnificent Map. Actually, we're gonna, we have two field spells, and we have two association cards that help associate with those field spells, because of the artists that they're used with. So we're gonna start off with Wanderies and the Magnificent Map, and by extension, Dimensional Shifter. By Dimensional Shifter is a really good hand trap. For a lot of decks, the main focus is that it helps support Fluanderees. Fluanderees themselves have so much utility, you know, with their normal summons, their winged beast, the, the abilities of banishing, you know, bringing cards back from the banish through their own effects, then being able to recycle things. It just, it's just maddening. And it, of course, it has to be stopped. So by limiting their field spell, which generates a lot of the combos to be, and then also dealing with the a hand trap of choice that wants to be a hand trap of choice to support them. Yeah, a lot of these things definitely had to be slowed down so that other things can speed up. While in that same sense, the lovely tier elementals had to be slowed down as well. While fusion is not a necessarily a big problem, the issue here is similar to Flaundries. You have field spells that do a ton of supporting. You can hit terraforming, you can hit metaverse, you can hit demise of a place land. I mean, demise of a land. Does that stop anything? No. Because that just means we're going to just generate more field spells. Or use more field spells to generate more, more you know, situations. You know, Mystic Mind was the problem. It's all the other stuff around the Mystic Mind that becomes the problem. To the point where you have to hit the field spell. Do I think the TCG is going to eventually hit the Mystic Mind? That's a whole other video. But with the tier elementals, their field spell has to be hit and the supporting class. Also had to be hit because remember one tier elemental is on this list, and that's a Hasva. And Hasva, I believe, is their searcher. So searchers have to be hit. This, you can see why and tell. Water Enchantress, Hasva, both had to be hit in that same sense. They're, they're, they're strong cards, yes. But there's still this mobility of things that has to be slowed down in order for things to progress. So now that we're going on from there, we're going on to our um, are two loves. I've already talked about the ABC Dragon Bus here, the Water Enchantress and Hasla. And I think to extension dimensional um, shifter. So double iris magician is just here to bump up the play of Pendulum. While Pendulum is already receiving a ton of buffs, but I believe now having was that triple skull crowbat joker in the OCG. And I think TCG also remembered that now we have triple skull crowbat joker. So not too many negatives there. Um, you also have to look at the sense that it's only at two, so whatever problems that this monster caused, I believe the monster that they helped bring out has been forbidden. And I don't, and I think subsequently the supporting monster needs more material of things to happen for the Double Iris Magician. I always figured that Pepe Magician stuff would start coming slowly off the list because it's only to realize that a lot of that stuff is just, it's, it served its time. Most stuff is more broken than it is, and there's a lot of ways to stop things. But you can conditionally now see these decks starting to play. And I actually do like the um, outfit of Double Iris Magician, because this is supposed to reflect your boy um, Odd Eyes Pendulum, right? This is the magician that is said to have been him um, with the whole scenarios that follow behind um, Zark. The Zark, is, Zark was a nasty human. Uh, in terms of this guy right here, I don't know exactly what was going on with, um, with, for, um, Phantom Knights, so I can't speak on him. Maybe someone in the comment section can. Um, in terms of Lightning Storm, generic support ha always needs a hit, and Lightning Storm is basically Raigeki and Lightning Vortex, and at this point, you know, there are still clears to those cards. So if cards don't start working, you use other cards to help you get rid of those cards so that your opponent is left with nothing and then you're free to do what you want to do. So in terms of that, we've got some with how Pot of Prosperity gets hit. You know, it's a very good card for the decks that it supports. While supporting those cards, 
We also have to take a look at things that have become more broken. Do you think this card is more broken than Regeki and, and Harper's Feather Duster? No, because it's limitations too. However, what is to be clear can be clear by other things now that those things have been baited out to help you survive your game plan and clear out the board for things to come later on. Now we reach on to the semi lim to the limit to the unlimited section. Um, in terms of most of these most of these cards, they're because their support cards have already had no effect on the current metagame. It is time to let them go. And there are two particular things I just want to say. We love our Sky Striker. Striker has had enough fun. There's really not much of Striker that can compete with a lot of things. And I do believe Mystic Mind that was an alpha Striker is not long is no longer there. While there are still some limitations to other cards Striker has access to, there has there are some cards that just there's no need for them to be on the on the list. I can also say that for Spiral Resort, being as how this is a field spell that had to be hit because of how broken their archetype was. While some of their archetype support cards have still been limited or even forbidden, there's no need for the rest of them to be affected by it and generate any more combos to where they have, you know, a lot of the other generic support in the game currently does not support them now that it's been hit um, in its respective areas. Uh, also say that for, yeah, I mean, you say that for a lot of the unlimited cards at this point, because you look at Magical Meltdown, which isn't really that much problem or are you hitting tier elemental to force them to use um invoked so that invoked can see some popularity and you can you know sell off some more invoked stuff you may never know and then i gotta reach up here to these last two monsters here jackalope is only getting back to its unlimited status because let's be real the support setup for um danger can be hit or miss. I think also that the fact that they're getting that Dark World support too, and having multiple Jackalow can be very beneficial to um, to the danger. Because you can mix danger with uh, Dark World and it can get some really nasty results. Genex Ally Birdman. And you guys know, if any of you know, I have a history with this monster. Um, this monster was part of the FTK OTK I used to run with Gallus Barbies. No Gallus FTK OTK. While it also extends to that variation, Agent, Diddy's GeneX Ally, um, there was the hint of chaos that used it, and even some Winged Beast decks took advantage of GeneX Ally Birdman. All because this monster had the ability to bounce stuff back to the hand to special summon itself. While in addition to that, you also have to remember that a lot of that stuff now is at multiples. But there are still restrictions and limitations to other support cards that are now forbidden or limited. So those decks that used to take advantage of the GeneX Ally Birdman's effect can no longer be. And what decks are you talking about, HPK? Well, let me tell you. Um, Gene Gallus, Gallus FTK OTK, because a lot of the monsters in that tend to be monsters. So there are a lot of things that slow down the special summons as well as the effect of those monsters. Then you had, even though I I love my agents, agents aren't as powerful as they used to be because it's just a lot of things that are a lot faster, a lot stronger, and even with the support that they got, it still really didn't help as much as people would like to have. And then there's Divine Wind of the Mist Valley, which is by extension that happens to do with some fusion stuff that was part of the Harpy Dancer FTK OTK. And at that point, remember a lot of that stuff has now been forbidden because there is no Ancient Fairy Dragon. She's banned in both OCG and TCG because of how abusable her effect was. So at this point, it's time to let a lot of that stuff work. So, with that said, those are my thoughts on this forbidden limited list. While a lot of cards definitely need those hits, some cards kind of didn't. But utility can be a problem, and utility has to be stopped to a point where things don't become more abusive. It's just how it is. So, let me know in the comment section what do you guys think of the OCG and TCG. I mean, of the OCGs for being limited list. Do you think of the impacts they'll have on the TCG's version and those things to come? So, with that said, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel as it helps me out tremendously. Hit the notification bell so you guys can be informed of when I upload more content. 
You can also follow me on social media. Those links are in the description box. And of course, you can catch me live at twitch.tv slash Harkin Player Gem, where I do my live stream sessions. With that said and done, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll catch you awesome people next time. HCJ, signing out. Take care.